Singapore's next general election will serve to show that the country is united and understands what its interests are. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said this tonight when asked a question about what the next election means to Singapore. He was speaking at a fireside chat at the Business China Awards. Our reporter Gwyneth Teo was there and she joins us now. Gwyneth, what more did PM Lee say about the upcoming election? I think topmost on everyone's mind is when is the next general election going to be held? And indeed, you know, PM Lee was quite coy about the timeline. He said that previous elections have been held as early as three years from the previous one and as late as five years from the, from the previous one as well. So, you know, he was really not committing to a timeline per se, but he did say that the People's Action Party is always preparing for elections. And particularly, he revealed that he has personally interviewed some of the candidates who might be standing during the next general election. When probed, he also said that some of them are a little more unconventional. He said that they're, they're tapping on different sources of talent in the search for uh, candidates, and they have taken different paths from the norm. For example, they may not have done so well in school. They may have pursued their passions as part of their career. They may have done some time in non-government uh, organizations. And he said that he was also pleased with the, uh, with the progress that's been made with the 4G leadership calling them a stable a good and stable core and saying that they would have to gain the trust and confidence of Singaporeans so th this is what it all means for Singaporeans I think it is to, to show ourselves and to show the world that Singapore is united we understand what our safety and our security and our prosperity depends on and we're able to identify and to support a team which will help us to move forward and to get where we want to be. And that is for many elections, but I think particularly for this election, it is so because we are going to be we're preparing for a leadership transition. And it is crucial that the leadership transition works well. To say it works smoothly and without any glitch is asking a lot, but that it must work well and I must be able to hand over and the next team will be able to take charge and make Singapore work in their own way. As I and my team were able to take over and make Singapore work in our way. I think that is absolutely crucial for Singapore. Uh, Gwyneth, uh, PM Lee also must have touched on the US-China trade tensions, uh, didn't he? That's been top of the minds of most people. Indeed, the, the entire fireside chat was 45 minutes long, and for half of that, Prime Minister Lee actually spoke about the U.S.-China trade tensions, and he was very candid about his concerns of a world with these two major major powers, uh, you know, at odds with each other. And one of the things that he touched on was the fact that national security and economics now have a very close relationship, much closer than it used to be, and that's really because of technological development. And you know, uh, right now, a lot of countries in the world are considering whether to use Huawei as their 5G provider. And, you know, he did touch on the fact that when it comes to communications infrastructure, it really is a matter of national security. But it's also a matter of uh, bifurcating the world along which technology to use. It could be a situation where one, par one party says, if you don't use my system, then, you know, you, then I won't use your chips. And that's really his concern about the breakdown in multilateralism writ large. He was very concerned that small countries or countries in in general be forced to, to form regional blocks in a world where globalization and multilateralism has broken down. For example, uh, a block in Asia that's centered on China, a block in America that's centered in the United States, uh, a block in Europe that's centered on the, uh, the, the European Union and its neighbors. And he said if these blocks uh, arise, it could cause rivalries and tensions which could lead to further friction and trouble. So this is what he had to say about his concerns about that. The big powers, if they hope to have a world in which people are not completely polarized into two camps, will also give small countries the room to be friends with more than one big power. And that means that you don't force people to take sides. You don't say, if you're not with me, that means you're against me. And you also develop the regional cooperation and the international cooperation in such a way that we, we intensify our links with China, but at the same time, we have strong links with Europe, with Japan, with America, and those links will also grow with time. 
And if you have many such links, and we can all, then I think we can maintain a reasonably balanced position with respect to all the powers. Mm -hmm. If you only have links in one direction, I think it's very hard for you to say, I'm friends with everybody. So looking ahead, uh, Mr. Lee also had hopes that the coming G20 summit will provide an opportunity for President Xi Jinping of China and President Donald Trump of the United States to sound a more positive uh, note about their, their, their trade tensions so far. But he also did say that he was, to quote, not optimistic that they would be able to resolve things entirely during the G20, considering that both countries have already undergone 11 rounds of negotiations. Right, all eyes on that meeting between the two presidents uh, in Japan. Thanks very much, Gwyneth, for that very comprehensive take. Gwyneth Teo there reporting live from Marina Bay Sands.